organizers of the second televised presidential debate remain uncertain about the appearance of President Yoweri Museveni despite several negotiations with the incumbent's team ahead of the debate later today. The debate will specifically focus on foreign policy, peace and security both within Uganda and the region, regional integration, international trade and investment. At the inaugural debate, President Museveni, who is the ruling NRM flag bearer, kept the organizers guessing about his participation until the last minute when his private secretary wrote to say that he would not make it. Later, at a media briefing at his country home, he referred to the debates as speech competitions that should be left to high school students. The campaign task force deputy spokesperson, Mary Mutesi, told the Daily Monitor last week that Mr. Museveni would be making last minute pitches to voters before campaigns close on February 16th. All of Museveni's opponents attended the inaugural debate. Let's cross over now to our reporter, Solomon Seranja, who is in Uganda. Solomon, if you can hear me, is it confirmed that President Museveni will be attending the debate later tonight? Certainly, Michelle, I'm standing at the Kampala Serena Conference Center where there has been heavy deployment of the uh, Special Forces Command, which is, of course, protecting the president. The advanced team manning the security at the gate and at the entrance of the, of the hall where the debate is going to be taking place, which is a clear indication that President Chair Museveni will be attending today's presidential debate that will majorly focus on issues of foreign uh, affairs, regional trade, and indeed peace and security in the region. Michelle. All right now, uh, Solomon, that Special Forces Command had released a video about two weeks ago showcasing their tactics, a video that elicited mixed reactions and created tension uh, in the run-up to the next general election. What is the feeling now as the, elections, uh, the election campaigns continue? Well, certainly, the Ugandans have gone past um, getting scared of looking at guns because, I mean, every day on the streets you have uh, soldiers moving with guns, you have police officers use, uh, moving with guns. So the whole gun fear effect has really gone low. So Ugandans have developed a thick skin. Nevertheless, it uh, has left many people worried whether indeed this was an intimidation of sorts or was it just a show of military might. Uh, but you have had many Ugandans here uh, really uh, saying they cannot be scared and not anything wrong will happen in these elections. But I think the army was trying to make a point, saying, look, we are ready for any eventualities in case anything happens. Of course, it comes on the heels of the arrest of General David Sejusa, who was a senior military commander during uh, once in the 70s, Right hand, um, one of the seven is right hand men uh, who indeed is now in Luzira prison after he was remanded by the court martial last week. So it, it is kind of um, it is kind of a catch twenty two with some people saying that indeed it is no, it is it is it can be an intimidation or it's just a show of military might ahead of the election. All right, now, Solomon, the debate tonight will play a significant role in influencing the decision of the Ugandans. President Yoweri Museveni could possibly be attending this particular debate. What are the expectations of the Ugandan people? Well, we expect the president and other presidential candidates to discuss issues of uh, foreign policy, uh, among which, of course, one of the key contentious issues is the deployment of Ugandan soldiers in foreign missions. Many people here still think that the boys in uniform should come back home immediately because they have overstayed in Somalia and in the Central African Republic. Uh, another key issue that we expect to be discussed tonight is the issue of uh, Ugandan, uh, the exportation of uh, Ugandan labor. Now we've had multiple cases of, um, you know, women who are taken to do domestic work in the Middle East who are tortured and mistreated. We want to hear what is the comment from the different presidential candidates on handling the exportation of uh, domestic workers uh, to the Middle East and outside Uganda. Also key on the agenda tonight is how is Uganda doing in terms of its um, in terms of, of its trade, you know, what are our export import ratios? Are we doing any, uh, any better than how we, how we used to do five years ago? And what can be put in place to improve our trade relations with indeed the region, but also on the international platform? I think also, uh, Michelle, one of the things we expect to come out is, is, is an issue of regional integration. And that said, the East African community, how far have we gone as a region to integrate and whether indeed Uganda has benefited from this integration.
Right now, Solomon, I understand that there are concerns that this particular election may not go as smoothly or as peacefully as other elections in the past. What could be the reason for this, and what security measures have been put in place to ensure that there is security? Well, if you could sample at least 10, 10 people on the streets of Kampala, you'd find about six of them telling you that they are scared about the forthcoming elections, uh, perhaps thinking that there will be any form of violence uh, in, in, in the 18th February elections. But uh, that fear really stems from, you know, the, the different statements that have been made by the political players, both from the opposition and, and, and from government. I mean, you've had president, uh, you've had opposition, one of the key opposition figures here, Dr. Akiza, basically saying that this time around it's defiance and not compliance. And you've had the president react to that statement as saying, we will crush everyone who will be involved in any form of violence. So when you hear some, uh, some words and comments from the different political players, it is, a, it is a reason enough for Ugandans to worry that the electoral process may, not, may be a bit violent. But anyway, that said, we've seen the deployment of uh, military uh, on the streets of Kampala. We've seen the deployment of police officers everywhere. Matter of fact, we reported last week, KTN reported last week, uh, I think uh, this earlier this month, about the, you know, the, the, the procurement of armored vehicles that we are seeing uh, at the Mombasa port there. And so it, it, it's kind of um, this double deployment in Uganda ahead of the elections. And all that can only be summarized in one statement, that there is need to have peace in this election. All right, thank you very much. KTN's Solomon Seranja, they're reporting from Uganda, confirming that President Yoweri Museveni will indeed attend that much-awaited presidential debate, which will be taking place tonight. Stay tuned to KTN News, where that debate will be airing live. Let's move on now. President Uru Kenyatta has blasted central Kenya leaders for being stumbling blocks to local developments. Addressing the leaders from five counties of central Kenya, like Kipia and Nakuru counties, the president turned up the heat, saying fighting between the leaders was derailing implementation of development projects in the region. Na unajua wote ni marafiki yao. Yeah. Si ni hivyo? Yeah. Sasa mimi naona shida. Sio uhuru wa taamuo, ni nyinyi mtaamuo. Yeah. Ya? Yeah. Nyinyi ndio mtaamuo. Lakini wakati huu wacheni tufanye kazi pamoja ndio tusaidie watu yetu. Ya? Yeah. Yeah. Uchaguzi unakuja mara moja baada ya miaka mitano. Yeah. Na muzi sio wa uhuru. Ni vile ni wananchi wataamua. Kwa hivyo tupendane, tufanye kazi pamoja. Na, tushi, na mimi najua tukifanya hivyo. Tunata tutaanza kuona masehemu yetu iki ikianza kukua. Kenyans have welcomed the ruling by the ICC Appeals Chamber to disregard previous evidence in the case against Deputy President William Ruto and journalist Joshua Arapsang. The ICC judges ruled to strike out the use of recanted evidence in the Crimes Against Humanity case facing the two. Here now are some of the reactions from a cross-section of Kenyans. TAT, we are witness by Amajitoka. This is the police information. Na hiyo ni ukweli vile pale nsema ilikuwa hakuna kitu kama hiyo ilikuwa ni uongo hiyo witness ilikuwa ni ya uongo yeah. na hiyo kesi eh, tunahomba eh, chat mwenyewe aone itupiliwe mbale hiyo kesi kwa maana hiyo those things ilikuwa ilikuwa uongo kabisa shauri wakati hiyo pita iliendelea huko hata tulikuwa home oh, tulikuwa tunaona eh, ruto huko Nairobi alikuwa na pigana na maneno ya makura na nini na nini hakukua kwa crowd ni watu tu alijiwekelea alichi wakati wa heldoret mimi naambia tulia tu Mungu iko unajua Mungu naye halali Mungu iko na anajua ukweli atulie hiyo kesi itatupuliwa mbale eh asa zaidi ya watu wenye walisemekana ikolikante isitumike kwa sababu kama mtu ame withdraw statement inaonekana ni kama hakuwa Hai kukua 
yani hakuwa na ukweli nayo kwa hivyo kama hawako na ukweli inafaa iweze kutupiriwa mbali yanaichi waweze kutulia na waweze kukubalia vile matokeo ambayo itatokea lakini tungependelea kama mimi ni maoni yangu au majudges wa kuwe fair na waangalie kwa upande ya yani unajua tunataka mambo ya ushirikiano tu, tuendelee unity kati ya wa Kenya iweze kuwa intact kwa mheshimiwa Ruto hana makosa yote na hatujaona ubaya wote kwake na mimi kama mkazi wa Eldoret tungeomba huyo ni kiongozi ambaye ametuongoza kwa njia ya heshima sana hatujaona ubaya wote kwenye tumefika hata wameona hakuna haja hiyo kesi iendelee watu wetu wa wawe hulu na tuendelee kuishi vile tunaishi kwa amani tukirudisha watu wenye walikuwa wamechitoa kwa ICC tumenyima haki ruta ka ka, ka ange chitakia upreste tumenyima yeye haki na hiyo haitakuwa mzuri haitakuwa fair kwa haki yake tungetaka tupatie uhuru yake ikiwa kesi yote imeondolewa ikuwe imeondolewa kwa kila mtu isiwe watu wachache waondolewe watu wengine wapake wa, wa kwa ICC The Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission has only recently received 560 million shillings as a grant from the European Union to support electoral processes ahead of the mass voter registration exercise set to commence on Monday. KTN News' Sofia Wanuna spoke to IEBC Chair Isaka Sain on this exercise along with the issues raised over the Okoa Kenya referendum bid and also on the Commission's term. This exclusive interview comes to you tonight after KTN Weekend Prime. Here now is an excerpt. So we're in 2016 now, yes. uh, in the target of 8 million extra more voters, how many have you been able to register so far? How many more? You know there's uh, continuous voter registration under the law. It's, it only happens in the offices of the, our, our staff in the field, in every constituency. And so far we have only registered 156,000, which is a very small number compared to the people who are out there who are not uh, voters. She is a gang rape victim of the 2007-2008 post-election violence. She contracted the HIV virus after at least eight men sexually abused her, and she is living with disability following that horrific ordeal. Eight years down the line, Jane, not her real name, narrates her story to Najma Ismail. <laughs> Eight years ago, Kenya was turned upside down due to a disputed presidential election. The country was a shadow of what it used to be. Ethnic violence cast a dark cloud with over 1,500 people killed, 600,000 displaced and over 900 women raped. It is hard to believe that eight years have passed since her horrific ordeal. And as some might remember the post-election violence vividly, for Jane, the memory remains fresh in her mind. Wapili haka mudiza. Badu nafanya nini na yeye. Haka nishika, haka nisikuma, waka kata manguo. Waka anza kunirepu. Kwa linirepu, walikuwa watu wengi. One by one, the hooded men took turns at her. She couldn't put up a fight as the men overpowered her. They kept flashing their crude weapons on her face just to remind her to stop screaming. Since the country was in turmoil, no one dared to come to her rescue. Ilikuwa ile nyakati ya kupigana, mimi ni osipta ni ilikuwa naenda, sabu kwa polisi singeweza. That night, when her husband came home, her once blissful marriage changed forever. Jane's husband was so affected by his wife's ordeal, he refused to accept the circumstances and went into denial. And when Jane found out she had been infected with HIV, her husband became irrational. 
alikuwa tu wazimu yani nataka kuhabi sex bila kondom hapo tu ndio nilikuwa nachukua na, na mchukia but anasema hiyo ni mapenzi yake jua anakunywa pombe akishalewa pombe inamwambia mimi ni bibi yake Jane's husband refused to take antiretroviral drugs and continued to seek solace in the bottle. He eventually died in 2009. Akakata madawa, akaambua atumie kwa akakata, akasema alikuwa anakunywa pombe akasema yeye bibi yake anataka aanze atamaliza vile alianza nayo. Atatumia kondom. Hata kama ni kifo atapata hapo, wacha kufe. It was uphill for Jane from here. She suffered a stroke that affected the entire left side of her body. She's unable to fend for herself. In most cases, more is she to enter. But the little did the hawk or can I cast a man? Go high or the nipend the moon, the moon, and the nipend the ocean of in a dab. Jane gets intimately lonely most of the time, but says she's not ready to commit herself to any man. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm
member of parliament had just 27 years in 1997 where he proceeded to serve for three consecutive uh, terms. And uh, in the last elections, he was contesting for the governor's seat, that is Lakipia County governor, a seat he lost, contesting on a GNU ticket, that's the Grand National Union Party. So his appointment as the devolution secretary has elicited a lot of excitement in this particular region. He was born in Nyeri, but uh, they moved to Laikipia, that is Nanyuki, and that is where the homecoming party will be at the Nanyuki Stadium. It has not yet started, but uh, people are headed there, and of course a lot of talk on political issues will come up uh, in this particular issue, the recent one of Ruto winning the witness ruling. These are matters I expected to come up as politicians address those who will be uh, attending the homecoming party. Michelle. All right, thank you very much. Carol and Derry, they're reporting from Laikipia. We'll be keeping you up to date with that story in our subsequent bulletins. And that story brings us to a close here on the weekend at one. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Michelle Ngele. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing.